And thanks for tuning in to Open Line. Chuck Long here with Kevin Kennedy. This is the hour that we're talking about legal questions. We're asking legal questions. Kevin's answering those legal questions, and it's helping a lot of folks out there. If you do have one of those uh, legal questions you've been wondering about, once again, get online with us at 737-7587. There are no questions that shouldn't be answered. So some people feel a little intimidated yes, sometimes they do. about calling in. We want you to call in and ask those questions. It helps a lot of folks. So to prove that, we're going to go right back to the lines right now Don is on the line with us Don we're glad you're here with us on open line you have a question or a comment for Kevin uh, yes sir this, this is kind of one of those off the wall type of all right questions. we like them off the wall like, Don um, the this, this, this situation over in Ukraine to where they got the, the government has got the 18 to 60 year old serving in the, the fight against this Russia thing now, this thing seems like to me is, is, is heading towards a, a, a world war. Now, over here in the United States here, if, if something like that was to happen here, you got people that probably can't own a firearm or something like that. What is going to be the, the process to, you know, if, if we need people to, to fight for the country, yes. our country, I mean, what, what would be the legal uh, thing that the government would have to do, you know what I'm saying, to get those people to, you know, to, to be out there on, on the front lines? You're good, because, Don. I mean, you're going to need more than the military. Yeah, I, I love hearing the assessment. You know, I have a master's degree in history. I've spent my life... Most lawyers don't have a master's degree, so I've watched and I studied military history. When I was in the courtroom, everybody tried to figure me out, how does he win these cases? And later I understood I'd studied so many strategic men in history, I brought that into the courtroom. But you nailed it right on the head. And let me say this, no man knows what we're going to face. Now, when they, are they going to bring some 16-year-olds? Well, throughout history they did, and 18-year-olds, and you've asked the question, these guys are, guess what? Under War Powers Act, the president can do all kinds of emergency things. And, uh, you know, right now, you know in Russia at the early night, they actually killed the czar. Now, the truth is, what's going to happen? Nobody really knows if they keep coming. So what I would say, they're going to change all kinds of laws. Whoever, you know, we have martial law just in case things, everything changes. Military starts dictating this is what we're going to do, rationing. So uh, thank you for identifying it. And, but also, everybody's going to be evaluating what we're confronted with, Don. Study a little history on it. We can learn what they did during the Civil War and the First World War and the Second World War. No man knows how that falls out. All right. So I know a lot of people are thinking about that right now. So thank you so much for your call this evening, Don. Right back to the lines right now, though. JoJo online with us. JoJo, we're glad that you called in. Do you have a question or a comment for Kevin? I do. I've got one question about a point of law, and then I've got two estate scenarios. I'd All like right. To do Hit them, JoJo. Okay. Um, it's against the law to open someone else's mail, and I'm just wondering if that is overruled in a court subpoena where the mail was not sent to anybody involved in the trial. You see that all the time. I just wonder okay. about that. As a general rule, there's a federal law against opening someone's mail, and so uh, I would stand on that. Even if, the, if a state judge said this, federal law trumps state law. And Jojo, what were your other questions? Okay. Um, in, in one instance, um, a widower died. His only survivor was his son. And the home was apparently quick claimed to the son. The son is married, and I was just curious as to why the home was not jointly conveyed in the name of the couple, if you had any theories about that. And yeah. you want me to give the other situation? Or? Well, it's it's not uncommon if, if my situation were like that and my wife had passed away, if I wanted to deed something, I, it wouldn't be unreasonable for me to deed it straight to my son. Uh, on the converse, if I knew things were stable and I'd love to do my daughter-in-law and she's the mother of my grandchildren, I would just deed it. That is a decision when I deed the property. I could deed it to them, tenants by the entirety. If Kevin Jr. died, Adonia would get it. If Adonia died, Kevin Jr. would get it. Uh, or do I just do a straight quick claim deed? Son, there's the property. It's yours. Now, once he gets it, he has the authority to go and deed it any kind of way with anybody he wants to. All right, and Jojo, uh, I think you had one more question. Sure. Um, so, so in that case, the, the decision of the, the way it went was made when the decedent was living, then you think? That's absolutely correct. 
Okay. Uh, third question. Uh, there's a woman, uh, she's married to a very wealthy man, um, but she, he survived her, and her will indicated that she had assets of less than a million dollars, but there's no mention of a trust, and I was wondering if there was a trust, would it be required that it be referenced in the will, and then also the woman's will did not mention her sister, and if the woman had a trust, could she have left something to her sister without mentioning the sister in the, tr in the will? Okay, here we go. Remember, every lawyer can draw that will. That document is there. There could be a host of reasons that wasn't in there. Sometimes people just forget about it. Sometimes they intentionally didn't want to do it. Or sometimes when they wrote the will, they didn't have the trust and they go create. As a general rule, that trust would go outside of the estate. So a whole lot of ramifications that what you consider. You'd have to do a little discovery process. It may get into a will dispute. If you got into a will dispute, then you can send interrogatories. They have to answer these questions. You could take their deposition, say, Chuck, where did that trust come from? Where is the trust at? Show us the document. Have you disposed of trust assets? Who's the trustee? And there's a lot of maneuvers that skilled lawyers can do, so you have to be skilled to try to find out if there's something still there that you could uh, lay claim to. All right, great info. Jojo, thanks so much for uh, the great questions. All right, back to the lines right now. Angela, on the line with us on Open Line, do you have a question or a comment for Kevin? Are you with us, Angela? Angela, can you hear us one more time? All right, maybe having a little trouble on that line. Let's go on to, let's see, we are going to go to Nikisha. Nikisha, you are on open line. Do you have a question or a comment for Kevin? Yes, I do. Hi, Kevin. Hello, um, Nikisha. I, my father, he had full coverage insurance on his car, and his ex-wife was excluded from the policy. So an accident happened where a stolen car hit my father's car and totaled it. I'm trying to see how can I get help for that because the insurance policy says they can't cover that even though it was full. Well, there's a misunderstanding somewhere down the line. So when we say full coverage, that sounds like it's comprehensive and they should pay it. Now, will the insurance come back and say, well, there's an exception to this and there's an exception to that. So you probably need to get a lawyer. Many times a lawyer can write one letter and it's corrected. Okay, guess what? The Department of Insurance, they're there in the state of Tennessee. You can always call and file a complaint if they don't. It's kind of called bad faith. And if an insurance company knows they owe it, they refuse to do it, well, that's bad faith and they can get in trouble and file a complaint and they can pursue that. So you always have that government option. I'd see my lawyer, maybe he'll send a letter, they'll pay it off and we got it done and got away. All right. Thank you so much for calling in, Nikisha. We're going back to the lines right now. Carol on the line with us. Carol, good evening. You have a question for Kevin? Yes. Hello, Kevin. Hi, Carol. Hi. Hi. I had a lawn service perform a uh, service on my lawn unauthorized. I'd come home and they were there and they'd sprayed the yard. Yes. And I'd not asked them to. Now they are, they turned their billing over to a collection agency. Yes. I, I have asked for an invoice yep. that I could pay. I've contacted them for months. I can't get an invoice. I can't get anything in writing from them to contest or to agree to but yet it's turned over to a collection agency. Do wow. I have any recourse? Yeah, Carol, that is a bummer situation. I'll address it in a couple of ways. Number one, you never had a meeting of the minds with these people. There was never an agreement, never a contract. They probably made a mistake and sent someone out and sprayed that. Now, there's a couple of other theories just to bear in mind. There's a law out there that said that's unjust enrichment, meaning that you got a benefit and it was to their detriment. Now, if it were me and we were trying to dance, I I would say that we don't owe those people anything and I would write them a letter and tell them have it removed and write the credit bureau and explain what you just told to Chuck and I. Good to know. So thanks so much for that call, Carol. All right, right back to the lines right now. Mary is on the line with us. 
Um, well, I don't think she is. Mary, if you are on the line, you might want to uh, call back because I think we lost you. So, Kevin, one of the things, too, that, that is, is a lot of these calls that kind of pertain to or what do you do when something happens? I mean, yeah. what's the first course of action what, when you've been wronged? What do you do? Okay, one of the first things, I want to get my composure. Let me try to think about it. Let me try to put together what is the evidence that we have regarding this circumstance. As we're being trained, my mind is going through this. I don't want to get myself put in that trick bag. Who else can back up what happened? And so that's the first thing. Get my mental composure. Know what I'm confronted with. You know, there's an old saying that cooler heads prevail. If I get excited, get wound up, and make, that's a bad decision. Now, I did that as a young lawyer. Please, Chuck, tell me I shouldn't have. <laughs> and of course, Kevin Kennedy, when he was a young lawyer, had a short fuse. I teach all young lawyers no short views because you'll live to regret that. So I'd get my thoughts together and then I would call a lawyer and say, these are the circumstances, how do you see it? So you've got the facts, you understand what your theory is, then you make a plan and work the plan. Keep the cool head like that. All right, let's go to the phones right now. Ann is on the line with us. Ann, we're glad that you're joining us here on Open Line. What's your question for Kevin? Yes, the question for Mr. Kennedy. Uh, I have a house and I would like to know, could I uh, turn it, uh, get a wheel for my granddaughter? Absolutely, Ann. Now there's two things that we are through or three things we can do. I can write the wheel and I leave my house at 1551 Whitfield Road to my daughter. When I pass away, that will can be probated and she's going to own that home. I hold it till I die. The other is that you could always give her a deed now. You have a right to go do that. There could be some gift tax consequences. You might want to ask a CPA. There's a host of places that you can say, well, what is the circumstances? Why do I do that? You remember, the government is always looking for a tax. We are in good shape right now. Who knows when they change the law? Now, when men's ideas and values change, the law changes. And whenever the government usually wants to raise money, the way to do it is through taxes. So what may be agreeable today to get through may not be next year. Those are some considerations. I like to bring in the health. Uh, if I've been diagnosed with terminal cancer and I know realistically, I am immediately going to talk to that lawyer and hear my options. And so let me say this, some days it's not totally clear. You'll catch Kevin Kennedy go into my lawyers. I said, I'm confronted with this. Option A, B, and C. I'm always looking for an exit strategy. I never want them to hem me in, and I don't want my clients hemmed in. So I'd say, no, we've got A, this could happen, B, and even as I go through that, I'll have some of my lawyer. I say, how do you see it, Chuck? I think I would take A, okay? How do you see it? Then all the minds come together, and then we'll make a recommendation. That's the way we operate. Oh, that is good to know. All right, Kevin, we've got to take a break right now, but we've got one more segment for your questions. So if you do have one of those legal questions, make sure you get on the line with us just as soon as possible at 737-7587. And we'll take those questions right after this.